So this is lesson seven in the iOS learning path. And this lesson is all about your application's configuration data. So this is the application that we created in Xcode and not the application that we, can, that we downloaded from our BuzzTouch control panel. So we're not gonna use this application for this lesson. We're going to use the application that we downloaded. So this is that application here. So let me get rid of this one and we will bring this one to the forefront. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a discussion about this application's bt underbar config.txt file. So this is really the bread and butter of your application's configuration. And when I say configuration, what I mean is, is when you create an application in the BuzzTouch control panel, it will come with an application configuration file. And that's all of this data right here. So this data is um, quite complex for some people and um, confusing. And so we're going to have a little discussion about how this is laid out and what its purpose is. So its purpose is to describe um, to Xcode how your application should operate. So everything about your application's behavior and layout and style um, will be described in this configuration data. And if we go back to our control panel and we look at this application, online in our BuzzTouch control panel, we can see this configuration data by using the configuration data tab and letting it load. So this data right here in this white box is the same data that you will see here when you download your project. I'm going to open up a blank text file and we're going to have a couple of minutes, uh, a few minute discussion about how JSON data is organized. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So JSON data, JavaScript Object Notation. And so for some people, um, they may be familiar with this kind of a layout or this kind of a structured um, data file from other technologies. So it's very common in the web, web technology world. So really JSON data is made up of two different things. Um, objects themselves and arrays. So arrays in this case are simply lists of other objects. Objects are things that describe things, describe things. So an example of a JSON object that would describe say a swimming pool, you're going to always have an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. So everything inside of these curly braces would describe the swimming pool. And we use properties to describe the object. So in our sample swimming pool, we could have something like size. And you could put, uh, I don't know, 35 feet. You could have something like depth. And you could have 6 feet. You could have something like shape. And we could put square. So all we're doing here is we're using individual properties, in this case size is a property, depth is a property, and shape is a property to describe the object. So in our simple little example, this would be the description of a swimming pool. So you might not necessarily know that this JSON object described a swimming pool, so you might do something like this, object type, swimming pool. And now a human who, are, who was reading this JSON data would be able to make better sense out of what these things are. So the, the properties themselves in this example are purely arbitrary. And I use this example to show you that we could describe just about any, any kind of piece of information using JSON object notation. Another example, let's say that we wanted to describe a car. We could say object type car and then we could add properties like color, white, engine size, um, V8. We could say um, number of gears and maybe this car has five speeds or five gears. And we could go on and on and on. Another property, etc. So 
JSON data is very, very flexible and allows us to do lots of different things. And all it is is a way to describe pieces of information. So this little piece of JSON data describes a swimming pool, and this little piece of JSON data describes a car. So clearly in our applications we don't describe swimming pools and we don't describe cars. We describe things associated with our app. So the things in our application that we describe using JSON data are things like screens, menus, um, themes, and other application specific items. So the thing about this JSON configuration data in your application to, to um, always stay mindful of is it's going to grow and grow and grow in its length and it's going to feel more complex but it's not as complex as you might think so in fact I was looking at this a square is not spelled that way boy I get these typos going I just can't stop so we talked about what arrays were and how arrays were lists of other objects so an array in JSON data begins with a um, an opening square bracket and ends with a closing square bracket and everything inside of these brackets is an object and each object is separated with a comma. So you could have um, object one. So you could say object one and you would have a comma and you would have the properties of that object and then you would have a closing curly brace and then you would have a comma you have another closing curly br or opening curly brace, and you would say object two. So object two, comma, excuse me, closing curly brace, comma, object three, comma, and so forth. So this description in JSON means. I have a bracket here so that I'm inside of this bracket I'm going to have other objects. So I have this object which is one object, this object which is another object, and this object is a, is a third object. So we have a list of objects inside the bracket which is an array of objects. Now the better example would be something like this, object type car color white. Oops. And then object type car color green and then object type car color red. So more typically an array contains a list of three different objects of the same type. So in this case this is a list of three different cars. These are simple cars, all we're describing is the color. But um, the idea here is an array is just a list of objects. So going back to our project, you'll see that we have lists of things in our configuration data. We have a list of things called BT themes, and you can see that this list of themes begins right here with this curl with this opening square bracket, and this and it ends with this closing square bracket. And there is one item inside this list of themes. This is a list of BT tabs, the buzz touch tabs. There are no items inside this list of tabs. And then this thing here, or this list here, is a list of BT screens. And you can see that there are lots of screens inside this list. There's a screen here, there's another screen, another screen, another screen, and then screen closes here. So most of the time when you're looking at the, the configuration data for an application, you'll be looking at the screens list, and the screens list can get quite long. So basically all this is are individual items. They all have an item ID, and they all have an item type, and then some of the items are contained within an array. So there's an array of BT themes, an array of BT tabs, an array of BT screens. And really that's the essence of how this file is laid out. And so if this app didn't have any themes or screens, it would look like this. And this application right here, or this JSON data right here, is valid as far as BuzzTouch is concerned. It wouldn't do anything because it wouldn't load a theme and it wouldn't load any tabs and it wouldn't load any screens because there aren't any. But in essence, this is how it works. 
All three of these arrays are contained inside of a, a parent array called BT items, and all of the data is contained in, in, in a um, kind of a master object called BT app config. So let's put it back the way we were, and let's explore this a little bit to try to make some sense out of it. So like our car that we described and like our swimming pool that we described, we can look at each of these items and learn a little bit about it um, just by reading it and just taking a moment to try to understand it. So BT themes, there's only one theme and incidentally in your applications config data it'll always only have one theme when you download it from your control panel. So this is an item identif identifier that identifies it um, uniquely amongst all the other items. This is the item type, which helps um, Xcode and iOS understand what type of an item we're dealing with, and it's a BT theme. And then this theme only has one property, background color. It could have other properties too, like background image. Actually, it would be background image small device. And it could have a file name. It might have um, nav bar color or status bar color. Black, or actually colors are a hexadecimal code. So, so the length of um, the theme's properties or the number of properties might be real short or it might be lo real long. It just depends on how you've set this up in your control panel. But at minimum, this theme will always have an ID and a type. So let's go down and look at a more complex, complex example. And let me get rid of some of this JSON data so that we can see how it works, um, just to make it a little bit understandable. Let's look at our uh, map screen. So if I get rid of that, and I get rid of that, and I get rid of that, and I get rid of that, all we're left with is an item, one item in our screens array, item type, BT screen map. It's got a nickname, it's got a navigation bar title, it's got all different kinds of properties that are associated with this map. And then in this JSON uh, data for this map, we have a, a child array, or we have a, a list of items that represent each location. So each one of these items is a location on our map. And you can see here, if I just use my enter key, and I, end, and I hit enter after the last item location, the last child items, the last child item, you can see that we have a, an item with an ID and it's a map, and then within that item we have a list, an array of other items. In this case, these are BT map locations. So JSON data is just a series of objects and a, and a list of objects that helps our application understand how to, um, how to display itself and how to behave and all of those kinds of things. So before we move on, I need to bring up a, um, a very important point. Um, we get questions sometimes about uh, from people that say things like, I created a new Xcode project without using BuzzTouch and I don't see my configuration data. And the reason for that is, let me open up this other project we were working with before. The reason for that is, is J the JSON data configuration file, that's a, that's a BuzzTouch approach to helping you stay organized um, and work with your um, application screens and menus and things like that. Normal iOS projects, normal as in projects created without the BuzzTouch control panel, they won't have a configuration file. This is a BuzzTouch specific thing. And so um, when you're learning through other tutorials and you're reading online about how iOS and Xcode operate, you won't see JSON configuration data files like this very often. This is a developer's approach to organizing data within their application. This is our approach. So don't, don't, don't confuse yourself um, when we talk about this JSON data um, by assuming that every Xcode project will work this way. That's just not the case. So all of the BuzzTouch projects that you create will work this way. So basically all we did in this lesson is we reviewed um, what JSON data was. We talked about um, objects and arrays and how arrays are just lists of other JSON objects. We looked very briefly at the um, basic layout of this simple application for the Monterey Harbor, and we talked about its themes array and its tabs array and its screens array. 
and we removed some screens from this list so that it didn't get too long so that we could try to understand it. And we even explored an individual screen's um, data, the map screen, and looked at some of the properties that it had. And this map has one location, so we looked at that location. And we didn't talk about how the software interacts with this file to actually um, perform and behave. And so that's quite a bit of quite a complex lesson in itself. We just wanted to make sure that we touched on what this JSON data file did and how important it is and want to make sure that you understand that it is um, central to your application's um, design and layout as far as BuzzTouch is concerned. And you will be spending time poking around this data as you get more advanced um, and you begin to experiment with uh, modifying it on your own without um, using the control panel when you when you want to do things like uh, move this data to a remote location like on Dropbox or something like that. So we're going to end this lesson here so that it doesn't get too long and you could spend um, days or weeks or month, months just learning about um, all the different ways that people are using JSON data in their um, programming projects, um, sometimes iOS projects, sometimes web projects, sometimes other types of projects. And we hope you learned a little bit about JSON object notation.